you. This morning we affirm again our trust in you. We ask that you minister to us of your spirit. We ask that you shift us from one level of glory to another. Bring us into depths of reality that we may look upon you as you are and be changed even into that which we have seen. Take all the praise, take all the glory in Jesus' precious name. Amen. Thank you very much. God bless you. You may be seated. Uh, this morning, um, I have 40 minutes to do a quick walk. And so I just want to take it precept upon precept and line upon line. In the day of revival, the first thing we do is to remove time. Because the spirit we engage is an eternal spirit. And when an eternal spirit begins to pour out his oracles, one of the things he does is that he bridges eternity with time. And so time will be suspended. That's why Moses was able to stay on the mountain for 40 days. He actually did not know it was 40 days. He entered eternity. And so when you want to discuss the subject of revival, the first thing you withdraw is time. Because time will become a limitation. And since we have time this morning, let's do precept upon precept. And we'll I'm, I'm saying that I'm saying that to let daddy know that we may not trust too deep this morning just to pray and praise the Lord I, I want to consider the subject of warfare this morning and there are three things I will be sharing with us very quickly what the devil wants to achieve in warfare how the devil gains advantage in warfare and what we must do in order to live a victorious life. I may be quoting certain scriptures, I may be mentioning some of them. As you go back, you may just look at these scriptures again and say what the Lord will minister to your heart in the name of Jesus. Genesis chapter 3 from verse 1. He said, Now the serpent was more subtle than any beast of the field which the Lord God had made. And he said unto the woman, had God said, Ye shall not eat of every tree of the garden? And the woman said unto the serpent, We may eat of the, of the fruit of the trees of the garden. But of the fruit of the tree which is in the midst of the garden, God had said, Ye shall not eat it, neither shall ye touch it, lest ye die. And the serpent said unto the woman, Ye shall not surely die, for God doth know that in the day ye eat thereof, then your eyes shall open and ye shall be as God, knowing good and evil. The first purpose of warfare is disalignment. The devil wants to shift you from the will of God. And so for the devil to achieve that, he will advance the tool and the weapons of deception in order to cause you to disalign. And the reason disalignment is very potent is because God is a king. If God were to be a father, disalignment wouldn't have been much of a problem because the fatherhood of God necessitates that the love of God prevails over judgment. In the context of a father, God relates with his children on the premise of love. And because God deals with his children on the premise of love, many things can be excused. But unfortunately, God is not only a father, God is also a king. And in the context of a king, the will of the kingdom is the government of that kingdom. And the moment the will of the king is violated, the purposes of God cannot be actualized. And so the devil knows that God is a king and we are, a, we, are, we are offspring of a king. And therefore what he tries to do every time he advances warfare is to provoke a disalignment. The moment a man disaligns from the will of God, that man becomes vulnerable. That man becomes a victim. Everything God has made available for him he will lose the right to touch it because the kingdom is a legalistic realm. And the moment a man violates law and order, he loses his right in that kingdom. As a child, you may enjoy privileges. As a child, you may enjoy the benevolence of your father. But when you are in a kingdom, you function by rights. And every time you violate the laws of the kingdom, you lose your rights in that kingdom. So the primary objective of warfare is to provoke a disalignment so that when you are disaligned, the will of the king can no longer find expression in your life. 
And if the will of the king can no longer find expression in your life, you become a, a very vulnerable entity, even though you are in the center of God's will, of God's presence. Number two, John chapter 10, verse 10. It said, The devil cometh not but for to kill, to steal, and to destroy. He said, But I am come that you may have life, and life to the full. So the second purpose of warfare is to deny you every abundance or every resource of the kingdom that God has made available to you. Number one is to disalign you and number two is to bring you to a point where you no longer have access to the resources of the kingdom. So when you see a man who is undergoing warfare, there are two things we always find in that man's life. Number one is that he's disaligned. He no longer knows the present revelation position of God as touching the matters of his destiny. Everything about his life becomes a function of luck, trial, and chance. There is no longer assurance and specificity because the will of his spirit is captured within the utterances, the voice of that spirit. And when a man is in disalignment, he can no longer find the will of God. Number two, that man will walk in a dry land. That man will walk in scarcity. Even though there is abundance and enough for every child of God, you will wonder the degree of depravity that such a man will suffer. And then you are wondering, is it that God is not mindful of him? God is mindful of him, but he has excused himself from the commonwealth of Israel. So warfare comes to undermine the quality of your existence. Warfare comes to distort your order, your right in the kingdom of God so that you become a caricature of your reality. And so every time we discuss the subject of warfare, our focus is to restore man back to his place of dignity. Our focus is to restore man back to the place of excellency that God had put him when he created him. Now, when you look at that scripture in Genesis chapter 3, the subject of negotiation was the subject of a God. The devil said, the day you eat of this tree, God knows you will become like him. Now, the question is, how was the man created? In Genesis chapter 1 verse 26, he said, let us make man in our own image. After our likeness, let them have dominion. So the man was actually created to walk in the class of God. So when the devil came trying to deceive the man, he was actually telling the man what he was. But the devil was able to negotiate at that frequency because the man was obviously ignorant. Because the man cannot become like God. He is like God. He was created in the image and the likeness of God. And one thing the man did not realize is that he was the only being created in that class. You know, before the devil fell, he was a cherubim. He lived in the realm of God. He was a ranking prince in Zion. When you study the profile of Lucifer, the son of the morning, before he fell, the Bible said he moved to and fro in the midst of the course of fire. The Bible said he was a being of the presence and he was in Eden in the mountain of God. So the Eden that this man is walking in today, Lucifer already walked in Eden. The reason the jealousy of Lucifer was incurred against the man is because the man came to where he was dethroned from. Where he was cast from was where the man was brought to walk in. And in this period, the man was not only brought to walk there, the man was brought to walk there as a God. Because Lucifer was not created in the image of God. Man was the only being created in the image of God and he was brought to carry out the function that the man was carrying out before. And so when he looked upon it, there was indignation in his heart. And so he came to the man to sell the same treacherous pathway that he took when he began his journey. Because he said, I will exalt my throne. What dethroned him was rebellion. And he knew that every time a man rebels in the kingdom, he is dethroned from his rank. And so he brought back that negotiation to the man. And he told him that was created in the image and the likeness of a God that he was going to become a God by eating a fruit. You don't become a God by eating a fruit. You are a God because you are created so. Fruits don't make men become like God. It takes a lot of creative masterpiece, creative prowess of the divine to fabricate man in his own image. A fruit can't make a man a god. But when you violate what God says, you lose your right in the kingdom. You lose your authority in the kingdom. You know why? This looks simple. 
But this is why the integrity and the quality of many of us, the quality of our life is compromised. Because you don't know how you are laboring more than everybody, yet you are not going forward. The reason is because we are in the kingdom. What will take you forward is not your skill. He said the race is not to the swift, neither is the battle to the strong. It is of God that showeth mercy. Because if it's about hard work, I assure you, there are many hard-working purpose. If it's just about knowing people, I can assure you that even the president of this country have poor relatives. If it's about working in the right place, I can assure you, many people own companies, they reduce to nothing. It takes alignment with the government of God for the invincible powers of the kingdom to exalt a man. Because promotion does not come from the north, the south, the east, nor the west. It comes from the Lord. Because we don't understand the foundation of kingdom. When the devil comes to you and begins to deceive you to violate God, he's actually trying to take your scepter of authority from your hand. And when that scepter leaves you, you will be shocked that that thing you are doing and you are prospering, you will be doing the same thing and suddenly begin to retrogress. And then you wonder what is happening. There is an invincible finger that causes men to go forward. That was what Adam did not realize. You know what? He was in the garden naming all the animals. He looked at lion. He said, you are lion. And they said, you are correct. Everything he desired to do was at his beck and call. He thought he would just live like that. He didn't know what kept him there was his rigid obedience to the government of God. Many times, believers don't know how the kingdom works. So they casually disobey God. They casually rebel against God. And then they come back and pray in tongues for 10 hours. And they are hoping when they go out, things will just work. Things don't just work. Spirits manipulate the civilization. When we walk with the Lord in the light of his word, what a glory he shares on our way. While we do his good will, he abides with us still, and to all who will trust and obey trust and obey for there's no other way to be happy in jesus but to trust and obey a young lady wants to get married and then she's under pressure she compromises and then she thinks marriage is just about exchanging vows she doesn't know it's a civilization she's entering into. The vows can be exchanged, but the bed is compromised. And because it's compromised, that place has become a citadel of a demon. But she doesn't understand kingdom. A man wants to go into business, and then he casually compromises, cuts corners, inflates figures, and gets a contract and goes forward. He doesn't understand that even the lung in his chest is a spirit that kept it there. And after the spirit gives it that contract, 40 years later, everything crumbles. He loses his faith in God, and then a strange sickness attaches itself to him. And that time he starts looking for God, the God that he left 40 years ago. He can no longer find him. And when he walks to the end of his life, he will now come back to the conclusion of the philosopher that all is vanity, vanity of a vanity, because life is about our alignment with the will of God. It looks so simple so that everybody will understand. That's why the laws of God are encrypted on your conscience. So even if you don't know the Torah, your conscience will be an alarm system that you have heard and you cannot act innocent. You will know. So when the devil begins to advance warfare, it's not just about cancer. It's not about poverty. It's primarily about where you are standing. He wants to challenge where you are standing. Are you able to stand where God says to stand? If you can't stand there, you are already falling. You are just waiting for the day of battle. He said that if you faint in the day of trouble, it means your strength is little. Many people who are standing are already falling. Because when where they are standing is challenged, they don't have sufficient energy in their spirit to retain it. So the idea behind warfare is to dethrone men by shifting them from the center of God's will. That's all the devil is interested in. And then you ask yourself, why is he so interested in it? Why is the devil so happy that men just disobey God? 
It's not just about the disobedience. The reason is because it takes the submission of a, a man's will to a spirit for that spirit civilization to be better in that man's realm. Because when God created this realm, he said the heavens belong to God. He said, but the earth he has given to the sons of men. So everything God wants to do on earth, he needs to partner with a man to bring it to pass. So when God created the world, the earth had no shape. Only Eden was in alignment with heaven. And the reason is because Eden was downloaded from heaven. If you study Ezekiel 28, you will discover that Eden was in heaven. Already, God just downloaded it to earth. But what God wanted to do on earth, he needed to participate and partner with the man to bring it to pass. These buildings we are seeing, the cars we are seeing, every invention on the face of the earth is supposed to come only from the Spirit of God. So that when you enter the car, the car will not just be a moving object. It will be an atmosphere of God's presence. If God was the original and only author of civilization, everything created would have been hidden. Your car would have been hidden. Your building would have been hidden. Your business would have been hidden. Because the perfect will of God would have taken place and found expression on the earth. But what the man did not understand is, every time you donate your will to a spirit, you open a door into your realm for that spirit. So when the devil was luring the man to disobey God, it was not just primarily about disobedience. It's because the man is the gatekeeper of the earth. So the day the man obeys the devil, the earth opens to the devil to also trade. Imagine if I come to your company and I insist that I must do business. You say, no, we don't want to trade with you. We don't. You are selling cars. And then maybe I'm selling um, pure water. And then I insist that I must be a shareholder in your business. You say, no, we, we, don't, we don't need what you are doing. We don't need what you are doing here. This company has no need for what you are doing. And then I go and buy court you and talk to your manager. And then I enter an agreement and he, he, he endorses it with your signature. And then you wake up one morning, I become a board member. And then I force pure water into a, a company that has no need for pure water. That's what happened on earth. The moment the man submitted his will to the devil, he gave the will, a, the devil, a legal right to become an investor in the earth that God was creating. So the devil became one of the greatest investors on the earth realm. So everything God wants to do, because he was once upon a time in the presence, he knows the things that God does. So what he does is that he began to pervert the purposes of God. He began to pervert the will of God. He began to pervert the ways of God. All because the man gave him access. And so it was not just about disobedience. It was about the betting of a civilization. So the earth as we know it today is a product of Adam's rebellion. Everything God wanted to do, he can no longer do because Adam obeyed the devil. Everything God had in mind was altered because Adam obeyed the devil. And if I go into the blueprint of the spirit and begin to show you some of the things God wanted man to do, you will marvel. Because when you start studying through scripture and you see the design God had in mind, you will discover that the earth is really falling. Because God's idea of transportation is not a car. God's idea of transportation is called by location. So Philip was caught up by the Holy Spirit. So when a man wants to travel, he is supposed to be caught up. That's God's plan. That's God's transport system. That men are not supposed to bother themselves with metals. That they collide with another metal and kills them. When a man wants to travel, he's supposed to be caught up. The way Philip was caught up. The way Enoch was caught up. The way Elijah was caught up. That was God's transport system. But because man fell, he has to come down to the level of a vehicle. God's idea of health was not for you to take antibiotics. Because when the man wants to be rejuvenated, he talks to his body. That's how God works. And that's why when Jesus came into the world, if somebody is sick, he said, be healed. Because you don't need antibiotics for your body to rejuvenate. Your body came from the word of God. So what sustains your body is the word of God. So the more you talk to yourself, the more you are revived. But now we have to work with, with capsules and tablets in order to be healthy. Because we are falling. So the plan of God for your health was when 
the more you grow, the more beautiful you become. You are not supposed to grow old. You are supposed to grow into glory. Because it's from regeneration to transformation to transubstantiation. So the idea in the heart of God is that when you walk the earth, because you are mingling with him over time, a day will come like Enoch. You will walk with God and you will be not. Because you would have gone to glory. But now man is falling, so the body dies. No matter how you try to take care of your face, do all the foundation, the manicure and the pedicure. When you are 60 years old, your body will give way because the man is falling. So what we think is so good is actually a testimony of the fall. That was God's plan. Why? Because another spirit had put his signature on the earth realm. When you see the cars, it's a signature. When you see people in the hospitals, it's a signature. When you see people dying, it's a signature. When you see people in poverty, it's a signature. Because the earth that God had in mind was a head, a world of absolute abundance. So the idea of warfare is to open a doorway for another spirit to begin to create and to invent the things that are in his heart. Man gave the devil the license to become a creator. And so every time you open your family up, you're actually extending that license to the devil. Every time you open your heart up, you are opening that, you are giving a license to another spirit. Every time, you know, these things are so subtle. You know, you see the way the devil came. He said the devil, the serpent was more subtle. So when he comes into your family, he won't come with a horn. He will just come with an advice and tell your wife, why is it that your husband always wants things done in his own way? And then the woman didn't know that a creature of wisdom is trying to enter through the back door. And then she begins to watch. They say, let's go for a holiday. Husband say, let's go to Abuja. Why? say, no, we have to go to Lagos. Ah! And because of location, the house will be on fire. And then the woman thinks she's trying to fight for her right. She didn't know that a serpent has whispered. Because what the serpent is trying to do is to create a tension in that atmosphere. And the tension that will be created in that atmosphere, a demon will sneak in. And when that demon sneak in, that demon can stay in the children's room. And then you don't know what the children are doing anymore. You wake up one day and meet a stranger in your house, bearing your son, your name, a son name. And then you say, when did this happen? It was the quarrel you quarreled five years ago that opened the door. But you were not aware because a spirit whispered. It's subtle. The way he comes in is through subtle wisdom. And then he begins to sell to you things that are not consistent with the word of God. And because you don't keep your watch, you will not know that a battle is going on. Warfare doesn't begin when somebody faints. Most of the warfare, we are active participators. We are active players in most of the major warfares in our life. Because the devil comes in form of counsels, in form of advice, in form of tokens. And then when things happen, instead of you to go back and check with the blueprint, because you were not, he said, it's not given to man that walketh to order his step. So anything that happens, your job is to go back to the drawing board and find out from Abba. What are you saying about this matter? Because it's not given to man that walketh to order his step. But because you don't know that there are other spirits in the league, when those things come, you think it's wise. And then you take a step. It is many days later, you now discover there is a way that seemeth right unto a man. But the end thereof is death. Because the devil cometh not but for to kill, to steal, and to destroy. Many people sold their destiny while they were in the university. He advised them that they will be strong. They should join the whole court. And then they were feeling strong. You are not strong because you felt like it. People who have power don't need to feel. When they talk, you will see it. Power is in the tongue. When a man of authority wakes up, he can wake up in the morning and say, shut every door. Not, if you like, do all the jamboree, the door will be shut. He doesn't need to feel like. But the guy doesn't understand. He thinks power is about feeling. And the devil makes him feel in a certain way and it destroys his life because we don't know. That's why I told you the primary objective of warfare is disalignment. For you to begin to win in battle, the first thing you will do from this service is to make up your mind that you will not move until God moves. You will tell yourself today you are not wise enough to determine how you will live your life. 
you will begin to seek counsel with the one that wrote your destiny before you came. Everything you want to do, you will check with him. What are you saying? Because many times, deceptive wars will come. Anxiety will come. It will look as if if you wait on God for 12 hours, ah, they, you will lose it. No, you don't lose. Because in this kingdom, we don't run by speeding. We run by waiting. He said, they that wait upon the Lord, they shall renew their strength. But the devil will make you know, if you wait for one day, you will lose that business. We don't lose. The part of the justice has a shining light. It shines brighter and brighter unto the perfect day. The foundation of warfare is subtility. Because many times, because the devil doesn't have enough weapon, he will want you to self-destruct. So he will advise you, so that you use your authority against yourself. You use your wisdom against yourself. You use everything God has given to you for your own advantage to self-destruct. And you will not realize it because many times it seems good until you see the end. And you know, the only one who knows the end is called the Alpha and the Omega. And because you are not at the end, you won't take the risk. Because if it will look good until you see the end, it's better you consult with the one that is already at the end. Because Alpha and Omega doesn't mean Alpha and Omega. It's not beginning and end. It's beginning and end. That means it's at the same time in the beginning as he is in the end. God is not in the beginning and he will be in the end. He is already in the beginning and in the end. You are the one who is saying tomorrow. God is in tomorrow. You are the one who is still saying yesterday. God is still in yesterday. There is nothing like yesterday and tomorrow. Everything is now. That's the meaning of eternity. And so the foundation of warfare is deception. And the goal is to make you disaligned from God. And so when you want to begin to have victory in warfare, the first thing you need to do is to create and to discipline yourself to begin to consult with the designer. What do you have to say? I know I'm wise. I know I'm an orator. I know I am gifted. But I choose not to depend on my gift. I want to find out from the designer because there are many factors in this thing that I don't understand. There are many indices that I cannot interpret correctly. So what are you saying? If you begin to master how to hear what he's saying, you will just see how your life will open up into glory. And then you are wondering what is happening. He has taken over. He has taken over. He has taken over. And so very quickly, in the next 10 minutes, what are the weapons we must have as we engage warfare? My greatest body is time. That's why I'm not, I'm not ascending. <laughs> I decided deliberately not to ascend. What I'm just trying to tell you today is obey God. That's all. Just be obedient. I'm just using words. I don't have time to start. Just be obedient. And you will eat the good of the land. That's all. Praise the Lord. And so when God created the man, in Genesis 1.28, He said, let them have dominion. So a man who has won the battle, the proof is dominion. Any area of your life where there is no dominion, it means there is warfare. And every time there is warfare, you are out of God's will and you are out of God's abundance. So a man who has prevailed in warfare has a seal. It's called dominion. Because when he created the man, he said in Genesis 1.26, let us make man in our own image after our likeness. And he said, male and female, he made them both. And then he went further to say, let them have dominion. And he outlined all the spheres of life, the air, the water, and the land. So when you see a man not walking in dominion, that man is in warfare. Because warfare comes to challenge your dominion mandate. The moment your dominion mandate is questioned, you are in warfare. And you need to know what to do to come out of it. Because we were not created to struggle. We were not created to walk in lack. 
We were not created to be sick. We were not created to be troubled. We were created just to enjoy God and to walk in the fullness of his realm. Every time it is compromised, we are in the middle of a warfare. And now what do you do in order to continually prevail? Number one is to walk in divine revelation. Any area of your life where you lack revelation, you are already defeated. The only reason you think you are comfortable is because battles have not come. And the reason battles have not come is because the devil has a timetable for everybody. And so the proof of victory is not just how you feel now. The proof of victory is the revelation you are guarded with. Every area of your life where there is no revelation, wait until battle comes. You will know that you were already defeated. Be it your health, be it your family, be it your business. Your business is not doing well because you have the right contacts. It can crumble overnight. You read the scripture, you will see it. Job, the Bible said, was the greatest of all men from the East. Everything shut down. What keeps you in victory is the revelation you are working with. And so, because we are in a treacherous season, everybody must be guarded with revelation for every aspect of his life. Don't leave your family porous and just say um, things we walk, that God is in control. God is not the only being in control. Adam has opened the realm to other spirits. Because if you think God is in control, then you will blame God for all the evil in the world. Because if God is really in control, then he's doing a bad job. There is what we call sovereignty and there's what we call power of antonym, delegated authority. God has sovereignty, but delegated authority is with man. And man has handed it over to devil, to the devil. So God and the devil are working parallel governments on the face of the earth. That's why when Jesus was on the mountain of temptation, the devil said, bow down to me. I will give you all things for it has been delivered unto me. Make no mistakes about it and leave your family porous and say God is in control. If you don't guard it with revelation, the devil will show up. Don't leave your business and say God is in control. Don't leave your children and say God is in control. There must be a revelation that creates a seal around it. So in Ephesians 4.27, Paul said, giving no place to the devil. If you do, he will exploit it. Because Adam handed an authority to the devil. And so the first way to walk in victory and in dominion, which is the testament of victory and over warfare, is to walk with revelation. And there are four things you will have handy when you are walking with revelation. Number one is that you must know that the word of God is God's final authority. If you don't have that revelation, you will build your future on somebody's promise. But you know, it has already been judged that woe unto the man that puts his trust in the arm of flesh. There are many people today, they put their confidence in another man. My uncle, my auntie, my friend, you have not walked life long enough. When you walk life for a while, you will discover there's no such thing as my auntie and my uncle in destiny. Anybody that helps you is because God moved him to help you. So your confidence is not in the person, it's in God. And those who are making impact, they know it. And so many breakthroughs in their life, the people that orchestrated it, they don't even know them. A man is seeking contract he has no connection. He walks into the office and somebody looks at him and says, what do you do? Favor just shines upon him because and not a, the Spirit of God has illuminated him. And the man goes out of his way to make things work for you. And then you leave that place, you never meet the person again. He is not even interested in your thank you. Meanwhile, somebody else who doesn't know the way of victory 
has been calling one man for one month. If you will spend half the time you use in calling that man to call on heaven, you will be shocked that that man you are trying to call will lose his sleep. Because when heaven calls him, he can't say no. We don't build our confidence in the world. That's why we struggle. And that's why demons still manipulate us. When a man builds his confidence on the world, when a man enters a revelation that the word of God is God's seal of approval, that man's life will be on a cruise. This is the way of the apostles. In Mark 16, 20, he said they went from place to place and the Lord confirming the word. The Lord wasn't working miracles with them because of sentimental connection. There were no miracles in their lives because they were apostles. There were miracles in their lives because they built what they were doing on the word. Because they know the word is the reference point of God. And he said the Lord confirming the word. That business you want to start, what is the word you have? That family you want to start, I know you love the lady and you have said a lot of things on phone at 12 midnight. You have used a honeycomb call voice and everything has been set in motion. But have you secured the world? Because an evil day will come. That's what we call warfare. That career you want to pursue, have you secured the world? You have not realized that this earth has no true foundation. They said the earth is on water and so you can't bank on anything that is earthy. I'm telling you why many fail. This thing is beyond impartation. It's beyond prophecy. It is a walk with God that brings you to a point where God rigidly commits himself to you because he gave you his word. And he can never deny his word. In Psalm 138 verse 2, he said, God have exalted his word above all his name. You want to know that thing that we always challenge the credibility of God is his word. If a man can believe the word of God, God can stand from his throne. If that is what it takes to get it done. But many people are in warfare and they are talking things they heard other people say. That's why there are too many casualties. Many people are trying to make a headway in life, banking on what they heard other people say. Your life is too important for an experiment. In John chapter 10 verse 35, Jesus was speaking. He said, He said, Ye are gods unto whom the word of the Lord came, and the scriptures cannot be broken. The scriptures cannot be broken. That's when Jesus said cannot, it means nothing in the whole universe can stop it. But many have not had the revelation of the world. They have had revelation of people. So you hear that this person is a bank manager. He owns Oceanic Bank. And because of that, you want to kill yourself. They tell you this person owns an airline. And because he owns an airline, you sign off your destiny. And you are waiting for the day he will show you mercy. <laughs> you may wake up when you are 78 years old. And then you discover that the word of a man is not a legal tender in the spirit. When God speaks, even if all men refuse, stones will rise up to perform it. When God speaks, even if your own father disappoints you, he can cause the wind to bring quails to your camp. Nothing will be there, yet it will be done. And then you will see the excellency of his power. In Matthew 24, 35, he said, heaven and earth will pass away. He said, not one jot or tittle of my word pass away. That is God giving you an information, a strategic information. I'm sending you to the earth because before you were formed in your mother's womb, I know you, I knew you, I ordained you and I sanctified you to be a prophet. Now that I'm sending you to the earth, I'm giving you a leakage. Even if everything failed on earth, stand on my word. If you do, you will succeed. That's a code 
that God was giving to mankind. But I can assure you, the reason we prophesy, we impart people, we pray with people, nothing happens. is because they don't have a word that they are working with. People are functioning by assumptions. People are functioning by uncertainties. That's why they are always faced with disappointments. If you want an end to heartbreak, then begin to stock yourself with the word of God. The day you substitute the word of God for every other thing, that day you have made your way to victory. And somebody will not step into 2022 until there is an insurance policy of the word of God released in his direction. You know, the poor man thinks that um, if only he were rich, if only things were working for him, he would have known how to go about his life. He doesn't know what makes the rich man rich. It's the things he who is poor is refusing to do that the rich man is doing continuously that is making him rich. It's not when you become rich you will do it. Most times you come to church, you will find the rich who are legally and legitimately busy seeking God. Some of them come to church, they say they want to be ushers. And then the poor man that has one suit, we iron that suit, he sits across his leg, he wants to create impression. And he has not heard that great men are not dressed in gold. It's when you scratch them, you will now discover they are made of gold. The poor man wastes the time he should use to build himself on creating assumptions and impressions. Why the rich man is laboring and talking himself. So many times when the storms of life come, you discover that the man who is losing is always shallow. The one that has death, it is in the middle of the storm that you see his glory. Because God is not going to take the darkness away. The idea behind the darkness is to give you a platform to manifest glory. If there were no darkness on earth, light would be useless. So God is not about to take away the darkness. You are about to receive light. And so by light, we war with darkness. He said the light shines in the darkness. The darkness comprehended it not. So what you call challenge and you are begging God to take away, God's opinion about the matter is not to remove the challenge. It's to make you stronger than the challenge. So the challenge becomes an opportunity for you to glorify him. If there were no sick people, the healing anointing would be useless. Many people are trying to, they are conscious of the problem instead of themselves. The problem is not the mountain. The problem is what do you carry? Because that mountain is the reason for your announcement. If God removes that mountain, nobody will know you. Today you speak about Benz in Idahosa and everybody is shouting. But we don't know the reason the name Benz in Idahosa became a household name is because he stood before 28 dead men. It is the rising of those dead men that gave Archbishop Benz in Idahosa a name in the body of Christ in Africa. If those dead men didn't rise, he would have gone in history like every other person. The challenge is not the battle. The ignorance is the battle. And so today, the first revelation every man must have is that the word of God is his final authority. Number two, revelation we need to have about the word is that the word of God is life. God does not only validate his word. The word itself has the power to animate and to produce what he said. If I say be healed, the integrity of God will be invested to make that word come to pass. But over and above the investment of the integrity of God, the be healed that is said in itself has the power to produce in it. Because the word of God is life. When you know this, the word of God for you will not just be a story you hear or will it be a message you write in your book. The word of God will become your asanas that you remove from your quiver to cause things to change. So when you know the word of God is life, you will now begin to administer the word of God like a doctor administers cure through drugs. So you go to your business 
and your business is not working, before you begin to complain, you will begin to speak the word of God. Because the word is life. That's why when God came into the world, the Bible said the earth was void. Darkness was upon the face of the deep. God didn't call the angels and began to complain. He said, light appear. You go to your business, things are not working. You are looking for who to blame or who to call. You don't know the first point of duty is to administer life. When a man understands that the word of God carries life, as he steps into that business, in the name of Jesus, I speak to this business, you are spreading. And then you are releasing those words and you don't know what is happening. An invincible investment has been added to the work. You come into your family, instead of complaining, you go to your room and you shut the door because you have life. All you need to do is to put life in the relationship. Because many times the relationship is dying because there's no life. There's too much corruption in the relationship. And when a man knows that the world has life, he begins to administer the world. In the name of the Lord Jesus, my home is a citadel of peace. In the name of the Lord Jesus, my wife understands me. I understand my wife. All things are working together for us because we are the called according to his purpose. And you are speaking these things. And after a while, the family have no choice but to begin to blossom. Your body is sick. I'm not against doctors. Thank God for what they are doing. But how much investment have you put on that body? A growth is coming out of your body. Thank God for what the doctor is doing. But how well have you dealt with that growth? If you knew the word of God is life, you will use the word of God to correct it. There is pain in your body. How many times have you spoken to it? That means you have the word of God in a book, but you don't know what the word of God is. Because the day you know what the word of God is, the first thing you do is to administer the word. You will grow in this consciousness so much so that even when you hit your leg against a stone, you say in the name of Jesus, in the name of Jesus, I release life. There is no damage. Something is going wrong somewhere. Before things change, you begin to talk. Because when a man begins to use the word of God, things don't happen to him. He makes things happen. times all the world we have is in a book or is in our head that's why we don't live the victorious life as you go into 2022 nothing passes your way without attaching the world to it before you step out of your house you set walls on error walls go ahead of you you can level the road before you come out so accidents will not be in your path not because the devil didn't plan it but because you have sent wars ahead and so even though an accident was planned your wars went ahead of you your world collided with the accident corrected it before you came and so when you came people are wondering what went wrong you changed it before you showed up that's how we live the victorious life warfare is not just religious praying and then you need that in the morning shabba 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 he has his place he has his place but there are fundamental understandings that we must have you have not sent the word on error because you don't know the word has life before I came for this service I sent words here and so the words walk before you come and if I want to pray for the sick now I can just make few declarations, things will happen. Because the walls are walking before I came. And so in John 6, 63, Jesus said, the walls I speak are not for educational purposes. I'm not a theologian. He said, the walls I speak are deliberate. They are spirit and they are life. So when I want to change things, I inject the word of God. I speak spirit and I speak life. So these words, they are not just a kind of, of speaking or a cliche that Christians use. When you want to find the spirit and the life of God, they are encapsulated in words. So when you want to release the life of God, you release the world. When you want to release the spirit of God, you release the world. But many don't have this revelation. And so they are going ahead of the world. They leave the world behind and they are struggling. What you need to do is to step back and put the word ahead of you and see the operation of life that is in the world and you will be 
amazed. You will be amazed how things will change. This is spiritual warfare. And that's why I gave us the background that nothing happening is a coincidence. Everything you see happening are deliberate orchestrations of spirits. And if you want to see God's results, you must speak God's word. Because his word are spirit and they are alive. In Hebrews chapter 4 verse 12, he said the word of God is living. It's not a theory. He said it's living and it's sharper than every two-edged sword. It's living. It's quick. It's sharper. These things are written to make you understand so that when you carry the word of God, you will know what you are dealing with. When you carry the word of God, they are not just letters. He's telling you what it is. In case you carry it and you don't know what it is, he's educating you that this thing you are holding in your hand is spirit and is life. This thing you are holding in your hand is quick and is sharper than every two-edged sword. So when you are looking for what to make the difference, then you go and carry the two-edged sword. That's why we read this book to understand what it is and how to use it. David said in Psalm 119, verse 31, he said, I will not forget thy precepts, they have given me life. No wonder he was such a victorious man. He said, By my God, I ran through a troop. He said, By my God, I leaped over a wall. When it's a troop, it's not 20 soldiers. It's not 30 soldiers. He's talking about a garrison. One man can contend with over 800 to 1,000 soldiers. One man. How? There is something he knows. See, that war has given me life. When David said, I leap over a wall, he's not talking about defense in our houses. Wars those days are city gates. Some of them are 10 to 15 feet tall. That means there is no obstacle. There is no such thing as obstacle in David's dictionary. Everybody can fail in the business, not David. Because he can leap over the tallest walls. The tallest obstacles can't stop David. There is no such thing that can stop him. The reason is because warfare do not just come to you randomly. He say no weapon fashioned against you shall prosper. That means the devil sits down, studies you before he deliberately creates the kind of battle that come your way. That's why what you contend with is not what I contend with. But when you have the word, there is no obstacle that can stop you. These are the secrets of warfare. You may be a music minister. Your battle will be to corrupt your soul so that you can bring fresh fountain. Somebody else may be a businessman. The battle will be to dull or dead thing his mind so that he can't think creatively. The battles are different. But the good news is this. The world is a cure for all. You are not trying to get the world to work. You were born of the world. Therefore, you cannot but have the results of the world. That's why any one of us that puts the word of God to work will get the result because we were born of the world. In John chapter 1, from verse 11, he said, He came unto his own, his own received him not. He said, But as many as received him, to them he gave the right to become the sons of God. He said they were born 
not of the will of the flesh, nor of blood, nor of man. They were born of the word of God. In 1 Peter chapter 1, verse 23 and 24, he said, you are born of an incorruptible seed. Incorruptible. That means the, the DNA, the spiritual DNA you have, nothing on earth has power enough to compromise it. So when I come against anything, there is an assurance in my spirit that my case is different. Because I was born of an incorruptible seed by the word of God. There is no such thing as he works for others, he won't work for me. If others fail, not me. I am different. I am born of a seed that cannot suffer corruption. So I'm not hoping that it will work. I'm not begging for it to work. It has to work. It is commanded to work because it cannot but work. That's why I say where the word of the king is, there is power. Who can say unto him, what do I start? See, things don't happen to us. I don't know how to say it. We make things happen because we are born of results. We are born of victory. We are born of dominion. We are born of, of success. Many times we don't know who we are. Thank God for the family you came from. Whether good or bad, it's not good enough. If you think it's good, it's not good enough. If you think it's bad, it's not a challenge. Because you are made of the best. The only standard by which you can be compared is God himself. You are born of the world. That's why he said in 1 John 4, 17, as he is, so are we in this world. In this world, not in heaven. You are not somebody hoping to succeed. You are success happening. You are not somebody that trials is about to break. No, you don't break. You succeed. You excel. You win. That's how you were born. You were born like that. You are an offspring of the world. So next time you share the word of God, next time you use the word of God, be confident you are speaking your native language. That's who you are. And finally, all things were created by the world. That means everything have no choice but to understand and to obey the world. If that chair you were sitting, you are sitting on were not created of the world, then the chair will have the right to disobey the world. It would have been possible for the chair not to understand. But even the chair was created of the world. The situation you are looking at he said all things John chapter 1 from verse 1 and 2 he said in the beginning was the world the world was with God and the world was God the same was with God in the beginning all things were made by him and without him was not anything made that was made if all things were made by him it means all things understand him and if all things understand him it means all things obey him because he is the Lord and that's why in Hebrews chapter 1 from verse 1, he said, God who had sound three times and in diverse manners, spake in time past unto the fathers of the prophet, has in this last day spoken to us by his son, who being the brightest, the brightness of his glory, the express image of his person, he now went somewhere. He said, upholding all things by the word of his power. Everything is upheld by the word. That's why everything obeys the word. Your health obeys the word. Your business obeys the world. The earth itself obeys the world. There is nothing that exists outside of the circumference of the world. And so next time, anything going contrary to the word of God, you become the administrator over that thing. Bring it back to alignment. Because the foundation of warfare is disalignment. When your business is going outside of what the world says, be bold to bring your business back because even your business is sustained by the world. When your health is going out of alignment, use the word to bring it back because even your health was created by the word of God. When your children want to go out of alignment, use the word to bring them back because even your children were created by the word of God. All things are sustained by the word of his power. This is the basics of warfare. There are complex matters about warfare. 
But if you don't know these basics, you can't even begin to do business in deep waters. Can we bow our heads and pray? And ask the Lord to quicken our hearts with the consciousness of the world. Listen, many people take truth for granted until they are in trouble. And then they begin to scavenge truth and they can't find it anymore. Many people take truth for granted until the evil day come. And then they begin to look for everybody that knows truth, hoping that truth will come. You are not supposed to look for it when there is an emergency. You are actually supposed to live in it so that you enjoy life. Don't wait until your health is challenged before you begin to find out the truth about healing and hope that it works for you. Don't wait until you are 38 years old before you begin to hope that favor may come. Don't wait until the business begins to crumble. While you are yet succeeding, walk in the light of God's word. Walk in that light and then you will see how glorious and victorious your life will be. Your life is not supposed to be up and down. Your life is supposed to be upward and forward. He said in Proverbs 4.18, the path of the just is as a shining light. It shines brighter and brighter unto the perfect day. There is no such thing as too much. There is only such as more, 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 because that's the order in the kingdom. But the way to walk in it is by the word of the living God. I pray for you today that the, the spirit of the Lord will quicken your understanding. He said, for this cause I pray to the Father of our Lord Jesus Christ that he may grant unto you the spirit of wisdom and revelation in the knowledge of him. The eyes of your understanding being enlightened that you may know, number one, the riches, the exceeding riches that he made available to the saints in light. Number two, that you may know the hope of your calling. And number three, that you may know the exceeding greatness of his power that he wrought when he rose Jesus from the dead. What he goes to tell you is that, number one, you are walking in abundance. Number two, that abundance is purposeful. It's not a waste. It's according to your calling. And then number three, he said there is a resurrection power at work in your life. That means even if things were to die, with you is the ability to bring it back to power, to, to life. It doesn't matter where you were. Even if you are falling, there is a resurrection power in you. As the word of God comes alive in your spirit today, your family begins to enjoy the resurrection power. As the word of God comes alive in your life today, your business begins to enjoy the resurrection power. As, your, as the word of God comes alive in your life today, your health begins to enjoy the resurrection power. And in the name of Jesus, the risen Christ, everything that pertains to you, right now, I command them to align with the full counsel of God. If you are sick in your body, we will just channel our faith towards healing now. I have two more minutes to go. Quickly, you are sick in your body. We are about to correct things in people's bodies. Everything that have gone haywire in your body, everything that have been disaligned by the Spirit of God. Now, can you just lower the volume a bit? Just a little bit. Just focus on Jesus now. One of the greatest warfare that men suffer is in their health. I told you there are complex things we can't share. As we are approaching the end of the age, the devil is removing his weapons one by one. One by one. Four years ago, I was caught up in a vision 
and I saw the first weapon the devil removed. It was deception. And that's why today you see people pervert the things of God and it's normal. Deception comes to rob people of their inheritance in Christ. The cure to deception is truth. Until truth returns, the body cannot be healed of deception. But unfortunately, even the shepherds that are on the altar can no longer say truth. The second weapon that was removed is terrorism. And the idea is to bring fear so that people can no longer walk in the fullness of God's ordination for their lives. The cure to ter terrorism for the believer is discernment. The sun man makes you because these things are marshaled from corridors of power. You need to know where to stand, where to walk, where to run for you to be saved in this world now. It takes discernment, not governmental power, not military power. There are compromises in different quarters, plagues, terrible plagues. And that's why you hear of all kinds of sickness breaking out as if it's an invention. And the next one that will be open is famine. So they have an issue with the chest too. Around your chest region. Is there anybody here like that? Just place your hand quickly. I cause that affliction. Now I release the healing power of God. From its root. In the name of Jesus, that plague ends. That affliction ends. Be healed in the name of Jesus. Thank you, Holy Spirit. Thank you, Holy Spirit. Thank you, Holy Spirit. The Lord is healing somebody here of a, an excruciating migraine. Very excruciating migraine. When it begins, you can't even sleep. Somebody around me here. Who's the person? Who's the person? Mama, you are the one. It's an excruciating migraine that really, really traumatized you for many years. <laughs> Go from her! Thank you, Holy Spirit. Thank you, Holy Spirit. I'm seeing the Lord put oil on people's hands. entrepreneurship wisdom for wealth creation the year we are going into you need to be wise in your dealing with finances you are receiving grace to create wealth literally to create wealth father whoever that one is an anointing will come upon at least two of you because the Lord wants to pick you out is a radical operation of God's spirit that is about to fall upon someone. The power to get wealth. In the name of the Lord Jesus, right now, please help the sister, right now, the plague of poverty and retrogression is caused. The power to get wealth. Take! Thank you, Holy Spirit. Thank you, Holy Spirit. Just help him so he's not... Thank you, Holy Spirit. I'm seeing the Lord take something from somebody's around your upper neck, your up, close to your neck, around your throat, upper part of your chest, on this middle row, close to that, close to that camera there. There's something there. There's something like a challenge. Maybe you want to swallow it. There's this serious deep in your throat, towards your, your upper chest region. There is an affliction the Lord is removing from there. Who's the person? Who's the person? Just around a circumference around the guy on the camera. Very quickly, I'm trying to round up. Daddy, you are the one. Just put your hand, put your hand on your on your neck there. In the name of the Lord Jesus, I put an end to that affliction. Everything that has caused restiveness is caused to its root. In the name of Jesus, be healed right now. Thank you, Holy Spirit. When we walk with the Lord in the light of His throne, what the glory we shed on our way. While we do His good will, He 
resting there and the Lord said his favor he's putting upon someone you have suffered a lot of heartbreaks you have been you have been you have been men have been cruel towards you but right now the anointing of God will come upon you and it will overwhelm you and the, the favor of God is coming upon you for marital settlement in the name of the Lord Jesus right now receive that favor Receive that favor. Receive that favor. In the name of Jesus. Thank you, Father. Where that fan is there, I'm seeing somebody healed of an excruciating back pain. Where this fan is, excruciating. Just take it. Just bend down, mama. That pain leaves now. Don't worry. Don't be afraid. Just bend down. That pain goes. In the name of Jesus. Leave her! Yes, touch your toe, come up, do it twice. You'll discover the pain is gone. In the name of the Lord Jesus. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Father. How do you feel? I'm feeling, there's somebody here, you are feeling something like a weight on your shoulders. It looks as if your hand is literally beginning to affect your hand. I think it's somewhere here. There's a serious weight, as if you can't lift your hand. Just carry your hand up, you'll discover that your joints have loosened. Your joints have loosened. In the presence of God, there's liberty. Your joints are loosened. In the name of the Lord Jesus, it's gone from you. In the name of Jesus. Thank you, Father. The Lord bless and keep you. The Lord cause his face to shine upon you. The Lord lift up his countenance upon you. And the Lord give you peace. Your going out and your coming in is blessed. Everything that pertains to you is commanded to prosper. The jealousy of God is released upon you as a weapon. In the name of the Lord Jesus. Thank you, Father. There's somebody here. Third, fourth row there. You have something. There is something inside your tummy. Like a stone. It looks like an organ is trying to. You are feeling that pain around your lungs or some kidney or something. And you feel it so hard and it's, it's, there's a pain there. The devil wants to plant an organ infection. I'm rounding up, but the Lord is putting it strong. Somewhere here. Is there anybody there like that? The Lord is putting it strong. Let me just pray with you quickly before I go. I'm receiving it now. Is there anybody there in this room? You are the back. I received that for somewhere around here. Maybe you tap your tummy, you feel this pain, and it looks as if there's, there's a challenge. Is there anybody here quickly? I want to pray with you. So meanwhile, you can just put your hand there. Thank you, Father. In the name of Jesus, that affliction is cost. That affliction is cost. Now the power of God comes upon you. Touch! Please help him. That devil of infirmity leaves you now. In the name of Jesus, be free. Thank you, Father. You were blessed by the message you just listened to and wish to make Jesus your Lord and personal Savior. Kindly repeat this prayer after me. Dear Heavenly Father, I believe in your Son, Jesus Christ, and that He died for my sins and was raised from the dead for my justification. I therefore confess with my mouth that Jesus is the Lord of my life. I receive eternal life into my spirit. I am born again. Thank you, Father, in Jesus' name. If you just say this prayer, 
please send us an email on amodiscipleship at gmail.com or reach us on our website orocomichael.com to enable us to reach you and afford us the privilege to disciple you. God bless you.